This is Richard Arfston. This piece of sculpture here is called Contralto because it reminds me of music. It really needs a home, a great expansive grass in front of a corporate building someplace. It's a lovely, lovely piece. People ask me, how do you tell a great piece of abstract sculpture uh, when you see it? And I can tell you what I look at. And I look at the lines. Does it have a composition? Uh, does, it, does it lead my eye around? Are the lines interesting to look at? If you notice the way I'm turning this, I'm doing that for a particular reason, because I want you to notice the lines. When I, when I stop, the lines, to me, uh, are worth looking at. And um, they sort of dance uh, there. That's what I say when I say they're mu it's musical, because they're the lines are great. They're just, they're just, there's a lot of thought that goes into making one of these things, you know. And to be quite honest with you, uh, <clears throat> you make a hundred and you only get a couple in the, in the top five percent. And uh, this is one of them. This is a great piece. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do. When, when you look at the next view, you'll see, uh, that this piece is really strong from the top uh, as well as from the side. And the mark of a good piece is, does it work all the way around or has it just got one view that's uh, really good? So this one's a killer, right? You know, I'm beating myself on the back here, but it's the truth. There's two in this series. This one here is uh, Contralto and another one's Adagio and they, they look like uh, siblings. I'm trying to do three or four things with these YouTube videos. First, I want to show you an interesting piece of art. Second, I want to show you where you could use that piece of art. Third, I want to give you some information so that you could have a metal fabricator look at this movie and give you some kind of a ballpark idea of what it would cost to enlarge this. And fourth, I'm trying to show you a body of work. I'm a very, very prolific sculptor. In other words, I have lots and lots of pieces. So let's assume that you wanted to buy this as an investment. If you are going to buy an investment, you want to buy something that's relatively unknown, which is me, unknown, relatively low prices, that's me, okay, and somebody with a large body of work so that there's a chance that he could hit in the art market big, that's me. So anyways, uh, just something for you to consider. There are not many pieces of sculpture that uh, are this exciting from looking looking down on them. I mean, this thing really works. And uh, I was just thinking that it might be great to have this in a venue where you could actually look down on it. 
say, um, a sunken terrace or something where you could uh, walk around it down inside the terrace and then there would be uh, a raised uh, place to walk around it on the outside from say 50 feet around or something like or even inside of a uh, mall like a giant mall where they uh, had uh, balconies around the main area and, and this could be the sculpture in uh, a situation like that but anyways uh, look at the top now and uh, see these lines how how uh, wonderful they are so uh, if you were considering uh, to buy this and uh, have it built it might be a consideration for you to put it someplace where you could see it from uh, around, you know. Stay like um, Central Park in New York City. It was in the middle of Central Park. You could see it from all the skyrise buildings all the way around it, you know, it'd be great. This view also shows what it would look like on a table, like a boardroom table. It can be bought just just to use it as that. Although I would really like to see this enlarged. Uh, once you have done the enlarging, uh, then it comes back from the factory. They don't keep this piece, you know. And uh, you don't want to let them saw it up for any reason, you know. They got to get their measurements off of it just the way it is. But anyways, so uh, after the enlargement is done, then it comes back to you, and then you get to use it as a piece of desktop art to show the history of how the piece was made. So uh, there's a price for uh, desktop work, and there's a uh, additional cost for uh, enlargement. It's all on, listed on Saatchi, if you're interested. Besides being a just desktop piece of sculpture, this is made to be an architect's tool called a maquette, which means it's a three-dimensional blueprint to have a metal fabricator enlarge this to any size that you would want. So he, he measures off of this, and then he uh, develops some patterns, just like a tailor would, and cuts the patterns out of sheet metal, like steel or bronze or aluminum, or, and, uh, and bends them like these forms. And this is a relatively simple set of uh, criteria that I have here. I don't work in any dished forms. In other words, all you got to do is bend a piece of flat metal. So that's relatively simple. Actually, if you look at what I do, everything I make is a box. It, uh, they're elaborate boxes. And then they're glued together. So uh, the idea is, so I could put this in a box and mail it to Abu Dhabi or Africa or South America or wherever and then on that end then they build it and you control the building that way you don't have to pay me to supervise somebody else doing the work it saves you a lot of money if you would like to find out more about this piece and others if you go to sachiart.com slash Richard Arveston there's a lot of my stuff up there along with prices and another little story, yada yada. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and a better tomorrow.